This is 3056 gig, and it's a very different GPU from the 3050 8 gig version released a few years ago. And we need to talk about this new GPU. So, the RTX 3056 gig. Stealthy released by Nvidia on the 2nd February of this year. Even the box of this graphics card kind of hints us of what's coming in this review. So what are the changes? Besides the obvious VRAM, of course, there are many changes under the hood of this graphics card. Well, first of all, there were already two versions of 3050 available on the market. One of them was for the system integrators for pre-built computers, and the one was in the retail stores. So now there's a third one with 6 gigs of VRAM. It also has less CUDA cores, the clock speeds are much lower, because it has 3 VRAM chips instead of 4, the bus was cut to 96 bits, and that cut the memory bandwidth to 168GB per second. So basically, the 3050 was crippled in all possible ways. Here's the GPU-Z of this new card, but it cannot detect it properly, so not all specifications are available. But because the GPU was severely crippled, it now also uses a lot less power. It doesn't need the extra power connector anymore. It can now be powered by the PCI Express slot and doesn't require such a huge cooling system, if you can call a 3050 cooling system huge. In my case, I have this 3050GB Eagle OC version. The OC means it's a little overclocked out of the box, so we're gonna perform all the tests on this graphics card. As you can see, it has two fans and a big aluminum heatsink that is covering the GPU and the three VRAM chips. There's absolutely no need in two cooling fans to cool off this 75 watt GPU, but two is better than one and I'll take it. Also, a good thing that the VRAM chips are in contact with the aluminum radiator through the thermal pads. Sometimes cheap graphics cards use, well, basically air to cool down the chips, but in this case, it's the radiator, which is good. This is how the naked GPU looks, this is not my photo, I do not know what is the source of this photo, but I couldn't take a part that I had because it wasn't mine and I had to return it after the video. This cooling solution is more than adequate and it never reached more than 70 degrees during my test, so good job Gigabyte. As a test bench, I used my i7-14700KF and two sticks of 24GB DDR5 7000 memory sticks. I also disabled the e-cores since some games like Counter-Strike 2 doesn't like e-cores and I don't want to have any problems during the tests. You don't need an amazing CPU for 3050, but I just want to avoid a CPU bottleneck. In order to understand the performance of 3056GB, I paired it against 3058GB and 3062GB. I also wanted something like ARC or RX6500, but I couldn't get my hands on it in time, so I will test against what I have at hand. Assassin's Creed Marriage, Medium Settings, Full HD. Resizable bar is on for all games. And the first thing we see that the older 3050 has 20% more performance than the new 3050. Yes, the new card has 60 plus FPS, so the performance would be pretty good, but still, the performance difference between these two cards that are marked both at 3050 is quite significant. Next is Cyberpunk medium settings, and the card struggles. It cannot deliver a 60 FPS performance in this game, and the previous 3050 with the same settings easily delivers above 60 FPS, and the performance gap between 3050s is now more than 25%. So the new 3050 is just not enough for a comfortable gameplay on medium settings. You will have to lower the graphics quality or use DLSS. We will talk about DLSS a little later in the video. Right now we're testing pure performance, and 3060 is basically unreachable, more than 60% difference. Next is Far Cry 6 with high settings. And in Far Cry 6 we just see the same thing, the older 3050 is just 25% better. Yeah, the new 3050 delivers solid performance, you can definitely play this game with very nice 60 plus FPS. But these both graphics cards, despite having very different performance, are being sold under the same name. I think you probably begin to see the problem here. Nevertheless, the card is doing okay in Far Cry 6. 
Next is Baldur's Gate 3 medium settings, and the new 3050 struggles to deliver 60 FPS. The older 3050 delivers 75 FPS, even the 1% lows is never lower than 60, but the new doesn't have the performance for 60 FPS gameplay. The difference again is 25% in favor of the previous 3050 8 gig, and 3060 provides more than 60 more percent performance in this title. Next to CS2, high settings, no FSR. All GPUs perform really well in this game, all above 200 FPS. But once again, 25% more performance from the older 3050. And 3060 has 75% more performance than the new 3050. Next is Hogwarts Legacy. And in this title, the new 3050 provides good 60 plus FPS performance. In fact, it's more of a 80 FPS average. I know it's not a very intensive scene and it could drop to 60 FPS on a very, let's say, intensive battle or something, but unfortunately I'm only at the beginning of my playthrough. So we're gonna use what we have. Again, 25% plus better performance from the previous 3050. Are you beginning to see the trend here? Next is Tiny Tina's Wonderland's built-in benchmark. The settings are set to high and unfortunately the new 3050 cannot deliver a solid 60 FPS under these settings. And again, 25% performance difference. So at this point, I think you already get it. The previous 3050 is much better product than the new 3050, yet they're being advertised under the same name. Let's look at the DLSS performance. So on the left is the original non-DLSS performance, and the second one is with DLSS under the same settings. And Assassin's Creed Mirror shows that with DLSS enabled, this GPU can show really decent FPS, up to 88 average and 72 1% lows. It basically shows the same performance level as 3050 8GB, but remember, we can also enable DLSS there. Still, DLSS is an amazing feature, and because it's a 30 series card, we will use it. It's basically free performance at almost no visual loss. Enabling DLSS quality in Baldur's Gate 3 allows us to finally enjoy 60 plus FPS performance. Still, it cannot reach the 3058 gig level of performance, and we all understand that enabling DLSS on the 8 gig version will also increase the performance quite significantly, but still, we can actually play and enjoy the game. And without it, we would probably have to drop the settings even lower. Not everyone understands how important it is to have at least solid 60 FPS to match at least a cheap screen refresh rate. Having 60 solid FPS is really nice if you cannot afford a high-end graphics card with a high refresh rate screen. I know, I'm playing Captain Obvious here. Cyberpunk with DLSS quality gives us an enormous gameplay experience improvement. We are now at almost 80 FPS with 1% lows not dropping below 65. It's even better than 3050 8GB without DLSS, so DLSS in this game really improves performance. The game is now definitely playable on medium settings, and that is just great. This is exactly the way I would play this game if I had this graphics card. Next is Hogwarts Legacy with DLSS quality. The performance increase in this game is quite significant. We are now above 100 FPS average and 1% loss is 67 for this scene. I think you can even turn the graphics quality to, let's say, high-ish with this graphics card with DLSS enabled. Or at least enjoy 60 plus percent FPS in some heavier scenes. But remember, only 4 games out of these 7 had DLSS, so sometimes you will have to deal with the performance of this crippled 3050. So let's talk about this graphics card. And let's begin with, why the hell is it called 3050? I think this is the biggest problem of this GPU. It's just not 3050. It's something like 3040, or 3050 not so super. These are different performance class GPUs, and we are back to the 1060 3 and 6 gig story. An average consumer visiting a local electronics store might think that these are identical graphics cards, just with different amount of VRAM, and would buy a cheaper version not knowing that he basically gets a different card. This card should have been named differently. Now to be clear, I don't think this product is bad. I think it's quite good. 
it's a 30 series card, so it's capable of DLSS and all other amazing AI stuff that Nvidia has in 30 and 40 series GPUs. There's really nothing bad about this GPU, but the second problem is the price. As of making of this video, I can only assume the recommended retail price for this thing is going to be 169 US dollars. At this price range, it's gonna compete with RX 6500 and GTX 1650, and it's a much better product. Not everyone wants to buy used cards, many people just want to buy a new graphics card, and they might want to buy this. Is 170 US a good price for this GPU? I don't really know. But if it's gonna be priced competitively in the end, I think it's gonna find its place in the market. As I said, not a bad product, just we'll see where it integrates in this whole RTX series and what marketplace can it take? Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment if you like the video or any questions that you may have. Bye.